Hi, I'm CB, and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about text and paths and, and making, well, working with shapes, shapes that you may already have. In this case, this example I'm using CS2. Anytime you have paths in any of the other Photoshop programs, this should work pretty similarly. I've got a brush stamped here on its own layer, and I'm going to work with this stamped shape in order to make my text go and fit around the shape. So this is text on a path right now and I'll need the text tool in a minute, but first I'm going to have to make a, a path, of course, to work with. And you do that by, we'll create a selection uh, based on the shape here. Hold down your control key or command on the Mac and click on the thumbnail picture of the shape in the layers palette. You'll get the marching ants coming off and that's the, the selection. Now we need the path, so go into the paths tab, choose down at the bottom the one that says make work path from selection. It's this little circle with kind of lines coming off of it. And then you'll see the marching ants change into this sort of little outline that goes around. It's it's a pretty, it's a little subtle, but it, you can see that there's an outline there. So that's the path. Now we'll take the text tool, as I said earlier, and it, when I'm doing text on a path, I usually like to type from left to right. You could choose center or one of the others, but I'm going to use left justify. In this case, that's just up at the top it's where you can see everything's lined up on the left. So your text tool, when you hover it on the path itself, turns into this little a line with a bendy line on it. And when you click once, that's where you start, where you'll start typing. So this is text on a path, and you see how it follows that around. Now, if I want to it keep typing, it would go all the way around and follow this outline all through. But I want to leave a little gap here. I'm going to put some more text on this line. So I've got to go back into the path and reselect the work path because when you start typing with the text tool it makes another path. So go back to the work path here into the layers palette and now it will give me that little bendy line again to show me I can start some new text here. And there we go, text on a path. And then just hit the check mark to commi commit it. I have a little layout here to show you that is using that same technique on several of those swirls all over. And, it, of course, you're not stuck with just using swirls. Any shape that you use, if you control and click on the thumbnail and get the selection, you can do that to make a, a lovely little path to type on. I know you can use the pen tool, of course, to freeform these, but it works a lot smoother, I think, to have a shape like this stamped and work with the selection. So now let's talk about the other way that text can work with paths, and that's to get text in a path. So I'm going to work with a circle in this case. I'm going to draw draw out a circle with the elliptical marquee tool and I'm going to hold my shift key down to make it a perfect circle. If I didn't hold the shift key down it turns into an oval but when you hold the shift it will stay as a circle. So now I have the selection and the method here is the same. We go into paths and go into make the work path and now of course you can't see it so you know why? Because I had have this other path in here that it didn't get rid of. So hang on, just hang with me for a minute and get rid of these things and that'll start with a clean slate. <laughs> I didn't get that clean. Alright, so let's try again. Draw out with the circle, let go, path, there, work path. Now we have the path. Sorry about that. So let's take the text tool again. Same thing, if I were to click on the line of the path here, we'd be going around in a circle, but we want to click inside. And when you move the tool, the text tool inside this path, it sort of looks like a little curve, a couple of curved lines around it. So I kid that it looks like a pregnant text tool now. One other thing I want to do before I start typing though is I want to change my justification to it's sometimes set at left or you know one of these by default but I'm going to would hit this and bring up the oops one more time bring up the character palette which I have off screen and in fact I want to talk about the paragraph tab in here and choose this last one here that says uh, um, all justified or something like that. I'm waiting for it to justify all. There we go. And select that. What that will do is now when I click in here and start typing, type with text within a path. I'm sorry, this is lame. You notice how it's making both sides of the, the lines of text hit this circle and it will stay contained within the circle. If I keep typing, you get it all in a nice little circle there. And I have another example here to show with that a layout that used that sort of a thing. And hang on, I didn't deselect on this from earlier. And as you see I here, it's the same situation. I didn't justify my text. This was probably center justified rather than justified all, which is why it's not 
some of them are not hitting right out to the edge like that. But I was going to demonstrate one more thing here, and that is when you have something like a tag here, how I'm, I made it ignore the circle here. And what I probably did, this has been a while since I made this layout, I don't quite remember, but we'll say for the sake of argument, what I did is I made the selection and then took the lasso tool here and chose this subtract from selection here. Then you just take the the lasso tool which has this little minus sign on it and that means it's going to take out pixels, or not pixels, but take out from the selection there. So when I let go you see now this is no longer selected and when I make my path it won't include that so the typing would all stay with this in within this area. So that's a couple of ways that text interacts with paths. I hope you found this helpful. I'm CB and thanks for watching.